Hey guys, and welcome to the first ever episode, I guess you could say, of Time Out Wednesdays. It's about that time for you to take a time out, sit back, chill, grab your coffee, tea, water, not soda, totally unhealthy. But yeah, um, I have told you guys before that I was interested in doing kind of like a little talk show where you know, you know we could just sit back, relax, and talk about things that are going on. So with that being said, I just want to clarify a few things. So I have so many topics planned out for this segment, I guess you could call it, or like this different part of my channel, All Things You. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard, but recently YouTube has done something with like their rules where you can't talk about basically anything so what i'm gonna be doing is um starting next wednesday so not today the next one i will be touching on some subjects that maybe i will not be able to touch on here i've read many different articles and some of them say that your channel won't get shut down it just wouldn't get monetized but then i see other articles about how your channel could get shut down for three to six months and that's definitely something I don't want so I'm the type of person that when I don't know what's going on and I have no way to like figure it out quickly then I just stay away from breaking the rules basically so today it's gonna be like or I I hope it can stay as a pretty friendly um, video for YouTube. I hope they have no problem with this video. I also hope that you guys like it <coughs> Excuse me, and I hope that you guys interact with me So let me know in the comments bar down below like what do you think about the topics that I'm going to be talking about today? What do you want to hear next time and just so that um, I'm clear starting next Wednesdays next Wednesdays Starting next Wednesday, I will be, you know, as I said before, posting, you know, touchy subjects. But um, what I'll do is I'll just have the friendly topics here and I'll either have the whole video or just like the not so YouTube friendly videos on my blog, which I'm working on getting together for you guys. And that should be up by next Wednesday. So I'll leave all that information down below when the time comes. So next Wednesday, everything's going to be listed down below. But for now, it is time for you to take your time out of your day. It is Wednesday. It is the belly button of the week. It is the day where we start looking forward to the weekend. Actually, I started looking forward to the weekend since the weekend, and I always want it to be a weekend. But um, that is not possible. So let's go. Let's get into this. And um, yeah, let's take a time out. So... Can someone please explain to me what in the world happened at the Emmys? Like, I don't know. I wasn't able to watch the whole thing because that's just the way my life is. There's always something happening. But um, it was a pretty big night for a couple of people. And one of the shows which won a lot, like it was one of the most award-winning shows, was The People vs. OJ. Yeah. Um, I have here down in my notes, Sterling K. Brown got an award for playing Christopher, Courtney B. Vance for Johnny, Sarah Paulson for Marsha Clark, and yet the person that played O.J. Simpson, a.k.a. Cuba, Go Cuba Gooding, um, he got Jack. Like, what, what was that all about? Shade, is what I'm saying. Because how, how is one of the best shows, like, one of backtrack how is the show that gets one of the most awards you don't you don't give an award to the purse to the protagonist basically the whole show was about OJ played by Cuba and you give everybody else and their mom a prize and you don't give Cuba his award like really what is that all about anyway that was like the only thing that interested me out of the whole Emmy Award um so yeah if you guys want me to touch on any other emmy stuff or you guys want to let me know and give me the full scoop of what happened in the emmys just comment that down below 
and let's move on so something really unfortunate happened to me let me tell you something I was freaking out so I was going to class and obviously I lived on I live on the 10th floor so taking the stairs is kind of defeating the purpose and I don't know for what reason but this school only the escalators only go from the 10th floor to the second floor so if you have to get to the first floor like you have to do this whole tour of almost the whole building and like go completely around in order to get where you need to be so that's like what is the purpose in that anyway I got stuck in the elevator literally for like I want to say I forgot the exact like I had written it down and everything and I, and I lost the paper because nobody wanted to believe me but I feel it was within the 10 to 15 minute range stuck in the elevator I could hear everybody outside pissed off because they needed to go to class and they needed to take the elevator and the, ele and the elevator was moving and I was inside the elevator all by myself with no service now you would think this elevator is pretty small it only fits like if you go in a straight line it would only fit about four to five people and you would think that I would press the ringing button no I just stayed there like really what is wrong with me I don't know I guess like the shock and knowing that I didn't have service and like I can't call like I don't know what happened but I just stayed there the point of the story is where's my 15 minutes of fame <clears throat> just saying cuz when Kendall and Kylie and their crew got stuck in their elevator they got like this whole like it was going on for days like they had they were talking about it for two days everybody was talking about it for like four days the firefighters that took the pictures with them were talking about it for like another 10 days i feel like i'm still hearing about this story and i want to know where is my at least 15 that's all i want 15 minutes of fame but no i mean not hating on them i completely love kylie i am wearing um dolce yes i am wearing candy k the liner and dolce k on top if you guys have seen this makeup before, like on my Instagram or something, which will be listed down below, um, it's because I'm filming the same day, so that's why. But yeah, um, I'm not hating. I know like they got their fame because obviously they're famous and you got stuck on your way to fashion week, fashion show, whatever it was. The whole shebang. It was pretty funny to watch it on Snapchat. But yeah, like it's not that big of a deal. It happens in New York all the time, if I do say so myself. But moving on and staying in the Jenner Kardashian family, um, Rob and China. I think this is gonna be my new guilty pleasure, even though they're running for like six episodes only. Um, did you guys see in the first episode where like China went to Chris's house and she was like, "Oh, Angela, Angela," I'm like, girl. Why are you calling her by her real name? Like, everybody on the show is calling her China. Like, why don't you call her China? A lot of people say that this is just like, you know how, like, at least in a, I'm Dominican. So, in a Hispanic family, or at least in a Dominican family, when you get called by your full name, girl, you better run. And you better run fast. Because if they catch you, it's going to be twice as hard for you. Whatever you get is going to be twice as bad. So... A lot of people were saying that, um, oh, you know how Chris doesn't like her, whatever. Like, she just did that to, like, dig on her, like, to make her mad, whatever. I personally don't think so. I just think it was a, out of a sign of respect. Out of, I think Chris meant it as, I see you as a person, not as a public figure. And you, the person, are dating my son. And so I will refer to you as you, the person, not the public figure. And so I really didn't think much about that, but I see where other people are coming, um, are coming from with that. However, I, I kind of enjoy this show, and let me tell you why. At first, I was one of the bandwagon people. I was in that bandwagon that China was only doing this just because she wanted to get fame, because she wanted to, I don't know, whatever it was that they were claiming that she wanted to do. I was on that band bandwagon, but. In the first episode, she really explains how they met and how they fell in love, allegedly. But it really does look like a solid relationship when they're together, <laughs> when both of them are okay. Um, 
Also, the first episode shed light on the fact that, you know, Rob is really going through something. And it is, um, it is understandable why he wouldn't want to be on camera and why he spent like four seasons um, not being shown and keeping up with the Kardashians. Like, it's understandable. And personally, I have struggled with weight too. So, I know what it's like not wanting to be seen. Even though I never got to that extreme. But I do, like, if that's me, who I was just a couple, and I still consider myself to be a couple pounds, you know, a little bit above of what I would like myself to be, um, I could see where he's coming from. And this is one of the things where I was like, okay, China, it could be taking, it, it could be taken one of two ways. It's either China wanting to, you know, use that to her advantage. Or it's either, and I, this is what I want to believe, it's China showing tough love. Like, there's times, if if your sisters are pleading with you, you know, get help. If your mom is pleading with you, get help. And they're all trying the nice way, and you're not getting help for yourself, and you're just spiraling, spiraling down. Then she took an alternative she's like all right let's make a show out of it where you have no other choice but to look good for the camera and that would force you to get out of bed and do something as opposed to laying there and doing nothing so that's how i like to look at it like you know china you know she just she's just expressing some type of tough love and i don't want to look at her like the way they when they talk about each other you know how like they have the show and then like they have them sitting next to each other like just talk like reflecting on what just happened on the scene that had just passed they seem like a well put together couple um for whatever reason it may be love the kid that's coming or you know whatever it does seem like a solid really episode the second episode wasn't all that exciting for me it was just like rob and his house and how scott you know, this is the other thing. Scott, a lot of people play him out to be, he would, yeah, of course, Scott is going to be in the show because he takes any chance to get money. Like, is money involved? He's in. But do you imagine what this show would look like without Scott? Like, this is the only other person that we know from Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Like, we haven't seen the sisters which i think we should be seeing quite honestly like where are you we want to see you we just don't want to hear kim over the phone we want to see her um but he's the one making the show funny because if not it would just be a dynamic between lovey dovey and hate like when you get kicked out the house and then all lovey dovey back when like when you guys make up so i think scott deserves a little bit more credit than what he is currently given but yeah completely will continue to watch them completely will continue to give you the scoop on what is going on in that show and what do i think and of course i want to know what you guys think um about this whole chris calling her angela and about what do you think does is china like really just being a gold digger or do you think she's genuinely genuinely trying to display tough love let me know what you guys think down below and let's have a chit chat let's talk over this and yeah now to something more serious so as you guys know i'm a beach body coach and i'm really into fitness and my goal has changed from being skinny that's that's that was my number one goal to be skinny um way back when and now I just want to be healthy. I want to be fit. I want to find the balance. Like, I know I'm never going to be a size 2. I know I'm never going to be a Kendall Jenner. I'm a thick, built person. And I understand that now. No matter what I do, unless I undergo surgery, I might never look like that thin. And I'm completely fine with that because my goals have completely changed. I do want to lose some weight. However, if I end up being 130 pounds but my stomach is slick, it's like I have no baby bump or whatever it's called, even though I don't have a baby. But you know that little muffin top you get at the bottom? If I, as long as I complete my goals of seeing myself and measuring myself and feeling like if I can go up the stairs like one flight and not get fatigued, that is my goal, right? 
And now with media and like people like Black China and Kim Kardashian and Chloe and all these public figures, Jennifer Lopez and all these beautiful, beautiful women who just have like the perfect hourglass figure. I, a lot of times we get stuck into that. But when I heard what I'm about to tell you guys, I nearly dropped dead. Honestly, I have no idea what this lady is thinking about, but, and let me just refer to my notes down here, um, a woman by the name of Monica Riley says, so this woman, she's from Texas, and she says that the fatter she is, the better and sexier she feels. This woman is currently around 700 pounds, if not more, by the time this video gets put out. And her goal is to reach 1,000 pounds. What? I am all for like body empowerment. And if you do feel comfortable in your own skin and you do want to stay the way you are, that's perfectly fine. More power to you. You know, you're putting a good message out there. I like, you know, perfect. I, however, think it's completely unhealthy to take it to this extreme where this lady wants to be morbidly obese. And so let me just keep on reading a couple more stuff that she says. She says something along the lines of feeling better that her belly is like, you know, soft and flabby, like, you know, not structured, hard and toned. She feels better that way and that she loves to stuff herself with food. What? is going on she says she is currently 700 pounds and she wants she has a goal to get to 1,000 pounds and be the you know the most obese women on record and on top of that she wants to be completely immobile she doesn't want to be able to move like what 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 you know there's an extreme to everything and like when you do put all these beautiful skinny skinny women on tv i fear for people who are like not comfortable in their own skin and they just want to be like ultra thin but then now a person like this might like spark something in a person's mind to the point where they too want to become like her and i think that this is what she's doing i think she's saying this because she wants the attention so according to the daily mail um her boyfriend helps her by providing her the foods like that she wants that the foods that she's craving at the time that she craves them and she excuses herself like not excuses herself but more so she excuses her behavior by saying that she could pass in a car accident. She could pass tomorrow in a car accident. And at least this, if she passes from this, she will pass from something that she enjoyed doing. And, you know, she, would, she will pass doing something that's moving her closer to her goal. Um, time out. This woman, like, really, really, that's the excuse that you're, like, you people hear that all the time well i could you know not wake up tomorrow um i could this i could that like at least i'm doing something I like you're doing something you're harming yourself like what are you doing and then this is not where it stops like she says on top of everything on top of all of that that you just heard she um, says that she also wants to have a baby. So on top of being morbidly obese and having this insane lifestyle, and by insane, I don't mean a good type of insane. I mean the bad type. I, I believe this is selfish. She wants to have a baby, and the fact that she wants to have a baby is awesome, and that's not the part that's selfish. Having a baby is like most people want to have kids they want to have you know they want their generations to go on and on 
But this lady, she goes, she want, I want to have a baby and I want to have a nanny for my baby so that the nanny can take the kid out to the park or whatever the kid wants to do because I'm going to be immobile. Time out. And she says she wants to be immobile so that her husband, well, he's not her husband as of yet. I don't even think, I mean, they don't even refer to the guy as fiance. They just say boyfriend. So she says, I want my boyfriend to take care of me. Hmm? What? Like, do you realize that the moment that you become a burden on this person, on this guy, he will be out before you can even blink. And then I read something else that completely changed the way I was thinking. And so she has this blog where it's kind of like her own little reality show. And obviously she talks about wanting to be obese and wanting to be a thousand pounds. And I'm just concerned like once you reach one thousand pounds, like what comes next? Like I'm not, I don't even know, like what? But anyway. Um, she goes, you know, so it's a blog about her lifestyle, her desires, her goals, her reasoning, and hopefully wanting to inspire people. And, um, this is where something clicks in my mind that she probably doesn't want to keep him by her side. That that could be part of the reason, but not the whole reason. And now, at this point, when I'm reading this article, um, my reasoning goes to the fact where she just wants her shot of fame. Like, I hope, like, I know by her statement about passing in a car accident and at least she's passing in a way that she would like I understand that there's some understanding there that she knows she's taking a risk. But I I refuse to believe that this lady fully registers that she is literally endangering her life over fame. And so these are topics that like, you know, you just come across and you're like, what? time out. Time out. What is going on? I don't know. Like what do you guys think do you guys think she's doing this because you know she has she might have self-esteem issues or because she wants the fame or maybe a little bit of both and like do you think it justifies her like me sitting down here and talking about this case is not gonna make her change her opinion and i realize that i know that but like i don't know i just want to know i'm not the only person who is mind blown right now